my mic is working. <sighs> I don't know if that's working. Doesn't seem to be. Hello, hello. Man, I'm really playing tech support for the whole internet right now, huh? <laughs> hmm. Restart Zoom. Why, why do you think it's on my end? Wait. Well, now I can't hear her. Test, test. No, I see my volume going up, so I think mine's working. Wait, can you hear me? She's not saying anything. I'm Apparently, oh, Megan runs oh, okay. away. I was I late to this. I was oh, like, oh, I'll go back. This will be still going on. It's, <laughs> it's Yay! Just, it ended it okay. <laughs> in like How's two seconds. Tries the charm. How's life uh, going? Why is my game not capturing? Um, I'm doing good. I'm busy as always. And how about yourself? Cool. Same. Oh, it's because it's capturing a specific okay. video. Good stuff. Any full screen applications? Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to my audience so everybody can know who you sure. are? Sure. Uh, I'm Megan Murphy. I for. 10 years I ran a, well, I still run the website, um, a feminist website called Feminist Current, although my main work <laughs> was to criticize feminism. So, and I also ran a podcast by the same name. Oh my God. You ever just do that? And it's just like the, uh, wow, that's gross. I now have a YouTube <laughs> show and a podcast called The Same Drugs. Um, I am a writer. I don't know if you want more than that. But. Uh, whatever, however you want to introduce yourself. However you ever just you do that and it just feels like the greatest thing, thing you've ever done in your life? I mean, much of what I did within the, the feminist <laughs> realm, I suppose, college. was uh, to talk about things like domestic abuse, violence against women, um, prostitution, and pornography. And at a certain point, the gender identity stuff started happening, so I started speaking out against that early on, which is probably how... I'm best known by a lot of people now, I suppose. I testified against um, gender, the Canadian gender identity legislation at the Senate in 2017 um, and was banned from Twitter in 2018 for saying that men aren't women. Um, so yeah, and still, I mean, I, I cover a lot of different subjects in my work now in terms of like politics and culture ah, and psychology and so on and so forth but i still do focus this is much of my work on on things like the, the sex industry and the, um, now, the gender identity empty. debate mm -hmm. a small test okay well um i've seen you bouncing around some uh common if you could i guess we wouldn't say mutual friends right. but um <laughs> i guess some of my friends um, have been bouncing around back and forth with things i've seen you saying on twitter um, I've had a couple conversations um, with kind of like the, the anti-porn feminist archetype, and I see that you're, uh, I guess, going around looking for these types of conversations, or at least willing to entertain them. So, yeah, I guess, do you want to, is there a particular thing you wanted to chat about, or should I start, or what? You go ahead. I mean, I'm happy to talk about anything, to be honest. I mm -hmm. don't have a lot of, you I'm, I'm teach open to, to anything. If, if I don't have an answer, I'll let you know, but yeah, gotcha. I, I'll talk about anything I can talk about. <laughs> okay, so I think in the broadest of senses, in society, Fuck, you uh, me? we tend to trade parts of ourselves for time or money or other people's affections. Um, on a more specific thing, in a capitalist economy, we tend to trade um, our labor, um, parts of our bodies, <laughs> parts of our intelligence, whatever, for compensation. Um, in my mind, pornography, pornography or sex work or prostitution can all be kind of an, uh, an extension of that. And I guess the issue that I have is that if men enjoy consuming pornography, and if there are women that enjoy creating pornography, I don't know what is the angle of attack to say that this particular thing that people can mutually engage in should be considered immoral or unethical. Well, I think that the main problem with the sex the industry test. is that no, no matter what, there's else. always tons Excellent. and tons yes, and tons of exploitation and tons and tons and tons of no. abuse and Very trafficking well. um there doesn't if you can pass the seem test. to be any <laughs> model I thought she was supposed to give me a that is, th is this just it these things from being no um foundational to the industry really it seems like these things <laughs> wait what am i cast oh fear oh 
Um, you don't want to catch, why we only catch legalizing, fear? Like Germany, for example, have seen trafficking um, blow up even more so oh, than it, you. it already oh had been. Um, and part of the problem is that most women and girls uh -oh. don't want to be in prostitution. So there's a huge demand for prostitution, there's a huge demand for pornography, and there simply are not very many women and girls in the world who want to be in porn and want to be in prostitution. So that's where the coercion and exploitation um, and sometimes force happens. Like, I mean, I think people think of trafficking as like this very specific thing where someone is kidnapped and, you know, maybe brought to another country and literally forced to sell sex, not allowed to leave their room or whatever. And that certainly does happen. But trafficking can also uh, look voluntary. Um, well I think there's a lot of women who I are in prostitution and porn who men would not believe are trafficked, who would believe that are well there done. voluntarily. And it's not the case. Um, and I think, I mean, I've spent a lot of my career talking to women who've been in porn and prostitution and all of them say that while they were in it they would have said that it was fine and that they were there by choice and then after they left they began to have a more complex understanding so much of the coercion that happened whether that was via a pimp or like a brothel owner or um you know most of these women are struggling with like substance abuse issues addiction uh, mental health issues all of them came from, you know, they had histories of really serious trauma, molestation, sexual assault. Um, you know, I think that it's, it's a lot more complex than <laughs> choice versus not choice. And I think that's a really oversimplified way of looking at the industry. And that's how a lot of people who will say, well, you know, it's fine so long as there's consent. And I think that they're not taking all these other factors into account. Okay, before we dive too deep into this, I think we need to separate out um, I think we need to separate out a lot of different things. So firstly, um, do we want to focus on prostitution or pornography? Because uh, I feel like these are two very, very, very separate things when we're talking about likelihood of sex trafficking or stuff like that. Right. So I don't think it's that they nice. are separate. Things. All of it. Um, you don't think I that there's a you don't think there's a higher likelihood of being trafficked in a brothel versus a girl working on OnlyFans? Like if we were to run the numbers, what do you think is more likely to see trafficked people? Well, I, there is trafficking that happens on OnlyFans, but what I mean when I say that they're not that separate is that if you're selling sex, I would qualify that as prostitution. So I think sure, that the but women again, who I'm gonna are in pornography and are selling sex are engaged in prostitution, and women in prostitution are often engaged in pornography, and it's sort of all interconnected in a way that doesn't make sense to me to separate them out as though it's black and white. Okay. We can focus more on porn sure, if let's, we want well, okay. to, but there, these are very different things. So I'm just trying to. I'm trying to figure out wh where we're at. You. I mean, I don't think they're very different things. So of that's course you do I think they're different things. We know they're different things. There's a difference between going to a brothel. If you're selling sex, or yeah. if you're, if you're selling sex, that's prostitution. If you're selling sex acts, that's prostitution. Okay. If you're do you selling think that a girl? To your body, it's prostitution. Sure. So do you think that a girl that takes pictures of her feet and puts them on Twitter is the same thing as a nine-year-old being taken from Uganda and trafficked in a brothel in Germany? Are those two things morally equivalent or similar to you? Um, I don't think that it's the same thing, well, but I think that it's all part of a broader well, industry <laughs> and that it is all connected. So a woman who's, you know, selling you pornography on OnlyFans is participating in an industry where there is that kind of trafficking, where we're talking yeah, but about let's, I mean, we have being to, trafficked into prostitution. Yeah, but I think we need to and talk about meaningfully different, like, for instance, like, when I work at a retail store selling shoes, I'm technically participating in an industry that at some chain in the supply is having, you know, child labor potentially, you know, building shoes. But I don't think it would be the same to say that, like, if you sell shoes at a shoe store, you are participating in slavery. Right. We can, so we can let's speak about say that we're not talking about somebody selling photos of their foot. Let's say that we're talking about I think I made a mistake, guys. This is a big mistake. To their body. So most of pornography is sex, right? Women are getting paid um, to engage in sex acts with men. Well, sex or sex part. acts. Okay, sex acts with men. Um, I don't know if that's even necessarily true, but um, because I, 
I want to. I don't know on OnlyFans if the majority of, of stuff being sold is boy girl content or if it's solo content. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I'm. I was thinking more of like Pornhub, but I, you know, I don't access OnlyFans, so I don't know what most of the content is there. But I think that there's all kinds of different <laughs> content on OnlyFans. I think that the, from what I understand, mo the content that makes the most money is like graphic pornography. So I think I'm that the like quasi aren't friends. That much money that, so the that's yeah. Okay, things. okay. Hold on, hold on. So that's just not true, okay? So I know the largest creator on OnlyFans, and I'm pretty sure she only does solo content. Um, Amaranth is the largest OnlyFans creator. If she did start doing boy girl content, it was very recent, and it's just with like dildos. Um, that is not true. There are a lot of people that are really big on OnlyFans that do explicitly solo content without boy girl stuff. Yeah, I wasn't saying that when I say graphic pornography, I wasn't necessarily saying that there was literally a dick. I was just referring to like feet photos. Like I don't think now that I'll feet photos are little. the things that are making the most money on. Only sure, I know, I know, but we're okay. Hold on, let's. Try. Okay, we're bouncing all over the place. Because you said like, sex acts with with men and women. So that sounds like pornography where there's fucking going on. But I think in, for a lot of OnlyFans stuff, there are just people that sell lewd pictures or naked pictures of themselves or they use toys on themselves. They're not necessarily like doing full-on prostitution. Okay, so there's graphic. That still qualifies as graphic, graphic pornography when we're seeing women's like genitals and things being put inside those me, genitals, me, me, like me, they're being me, penetrated me, me, and so on and so forth. I would still qualify that as graphic. Sure. And we can call it graphic pornography, but it's not sex acts between men and women. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so are you, but you just want to talk about OnlyFans, and no, I want to talk to... about like the porn industry. Okay, when I argue with conservatives, I do a lot of political debate online. When I argue with conservatives about immigration, um, sometimes they'll play this game where they um, they they swap out refugees, illegal immigrants, and immigrants, and they talk about all of them at the same time. And I think that these are three totally separate groups of people that have totally <coughs> separate like realities that they deal with, and they need totally separate treatments. The way you would treat an illegal immigrant is going to be way different than you treat a refugee. When we're talking about like pornography and prostitution, like if you want to say I'm not a big fan of prostitution because it seems like there's a lot of trafficking involved, even in places where it's legalized, like Germany, which is true. Um, that's a lot different than saying I don't like all of the sex industry because there's trafficking everywhere. When we look at things like OnlyFans, that's largely empowering to the women that work there and don't have anywhere near the amount of trafficking going on as what's going to happen in like a shady brothel in Europe. I, I think that these are now we can 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 empowering to women. I understand. I know. Hold on. I'm just saying. Generalization that but you. Yeah, but you're making a sweeping generalization of OnlyFans and you're roping in prostitution. I'm talking about Pornhub. You you're the one who's hyper focusing on OnlyFans. Fans. Like I'm saying, the porn industry. So mm -hmm. most of what we see on Pornhub gotcha. is graphic pornography. Okay. It's mostly dehumanizing. It's mostly misogynist. There's tons of racism. There's tons of like incest porn. There's tons of barely legal porn, um, and they are sex acts. Like they're women who are getting paid <laughs> to perform sex acts that they wouldn't. Is it, uh, are we getting? Is this this so ends? So many women in does, these videos. Does this are debate being not go past this point? Abused, hurt coerced you know they sign a contract and then they get pushed into doing all sure. sorts okay, of okay, things. Sure. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, let's okay, wait, let's, okay, okay, hold on. Let's do one thing at a time, okay? So, the is there some level of okay, even if, if there's some even level even of exploitation, even arguably even yes in any job, right? Them. When you work a job, you're usually doing things you wouldn't want to be doing otherwise in exchange for money. That's why people give you money for it. That's why they're called jobs. Right? So the question is 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 the willingness for somebody to do pornographic content is that so meaningfully different from all other forms of labor that it's inherently exploitative if you believe that why that, yeah if you're engaging in sex acts and being penetrated it does feel quite different i mean i think that we can all agree that being forced to sell a pair of shoes doesn't feel the same as it does if we're forced to engage in a sex act that we don't want to engage with or if we're pressure to have sex with somebody that we don't want to have sex with even you know sure, there's sure, a sure, reason but, but, why women are so traumatized by not just like violent rape which of course women are traumatized by violent rape but by being pressured into doing things that they don't want to do in bed. Sure, but what is the meaningful difference between being forced to sell a pair of shoes and being forced to engage in a sex act if you can choose to do something anyway? For the vast majority of people working on Pornhub, they don't have to work porn. They could just work other jobs, but they elect to do porn because they make way more money doing it. If you and can so the fact that they're being abused and exploited and dehumanized and degraded and traumatized makes it okay because they agreed? Well, they're being abused and exploited and traumatized from your perspective, but they might not feel that way. But they say that. If you talk to any woman who's left porn or prostitution, they'll, I mean, look at what happened to Lana Rhodes. 
Do you I mean, think she went every, in voluntarily, okay, yeah. supposedly, and left and said she was traumatized. Well, she hates sex. She doesn't mm -hmm. even want to, like, hook up with anybody. She was pressured to do in, into doing all of these horrific degrees to, like, puking in a dog bowl and drinking Yeah, urine. I understand all of these things, but if the person can elect to do a different type of work, how can you tell somebody that you're not allowed to do it? If you've got a woman that would be working at Target or I mean, Starbucks for nine fifty an hour, how are they're you going to, to say it. that you're not allowed to do So you're okay with it being legal and everything? You don't want to make it illegal? Well, I don't want to make it illegal for a woman to make a choice to sell sex. What I have a problem with, if we're talking about legislation now, if we're talking about what we would do about the law in terms of prostitution and pornography, what I would advocate and what I did, what I have been advocating for for some time is the Nordic model. So essentially it criminalizes the people who are doing the exploiting, the abusing, people who are profiting off of this um, in terms of like pushing women to do sex acts and making money off of that. Um, so the pornographers, the pimps, the brothel owners, Sure, so when you dons. say things like banning people that are pressuring or pushing women into sex trafficking, that's a position that's shared by 99% of the world and probably like 90% of people in the sex industry. I don't think anybody that works on Pornhub or OnlyFans or in a brothel is a fan of people pressuring or pushing people into doing that line of work. Right, and I think that what a lot of people don't realize is how much coercion and exploitation is happening in the sex trade. So I think that when your average guy is watching porn, he's thinking, well, she agreed to do this. It's not real. She's not actually being hurt, you know, and, you know, she's getting paid. So fair game. And so they if have there no is, idea what's there happened is, behind the scenes. Sure. So they have there, no idea how she feels about it. She, they have no idea, and they don't seem to care about how much it'll impact her after the fact, psychologically. Sure. So if there was a way to ensure bro. that people that were doing these types of sex acts weren't being coerced, would you all of a sudden be okay with the whole model, or is this a red herring that you don't actually care that much about? Like, well, let's say that there was an exist. industry. Let, it's not a reality. I didn't ask. If it, I didn't ask. So that. I, I said that if we could make reality. a company, if we could make a company, and that company had like a f affirmative consent forms or something, that there was some way to ensure that every single person that was in involved in the production of their pornography wasn't being coerced or abused or whatever and they were happy doing it the whole time as much as you would be doing a job would you be okay with that industry or would you still be ideologically opposed to it on principle well first of all supposedly that's already happening supposedly these women are already I didn't ask supposedly if it's happening saying, I'm asking if that was yeah, but reality I'm talking about okay what happens in the reality but I don't actually I don't the problem is that right now world. I don't I mean, know we could also say like I don't know what you're I don't know what you're I don't know what you're opposed to right now I don't I don't even know what part you because it seems like what you're saying is women being pressured into sex trafficking is bad, but literally nobody disagrees with you there. But that's like a very like illegitimate position to take when the behind this position is actually you would outlaw all pornography. Is that, well, that's what it sounds like I've heard you push for, or you'd make almost all of this illegal. So if that's the case, then I want to hear that position. I don't want to hear, I think people shouldn't be pressured into porn because everybody agrees with you. I agree with you. But so I'm asking if we were, if you could find a way hypothetically to remove all of the pressure, would you still be okay with people doing porn? I don't think, what I don't think it should be legal to do is to pay somebody else for sex. Why not? I don't think it's possible to ban pornography. I don't think it's possible Wait, why, why to Wait, why shouldn't it be legal for two consenting people to do a monetary exchange for sex? Because I think that it's coercive <coughs> and exploitative to pay somebody to engage in sex acts that they don't want to engage in. I think the that whole it's point unethical. Of, yeah, the I, whole, think I know that it's unethical. I, think I know you think it's unethical. That's the whole. That's what we're trying to figure out. A why. woman who doesn't want to be with him is an unethical person. Okay, but I'm trying to figure out if two people are mutually consenting. You keep saying coercive just because there's an exchange of money involved, right? If I pay for somebody for a massage, is that coercive because they'd rather not be massaging me? They probably would rather not be, but if they're getting paid money for it and it's their job, of course they'll do it. So I'm trying to figure out what is the inherently coercive thing when two consenting people are exchanging money for sex. Do you think that there's a difference between somebody getting raped and somebody being paid to sell a cup of coffee? I mean, I think that we all know that sex is a particularly intimate act. Why are we comparing? Are wait, why are we comparing rape vulnerable? to coffee? Hold on. Because I'm you're not saying about that all work somebody. is exploitative, and that I'm people, all people, I'm are not, being coerced into work. So you not, made the comparison. I, no, 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 so no, 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 That's what I'm responding. I'm to. challenging your so assertion. So a massage that is not the same I'm thing. I'm challenging as a dick your anymore. assertion that all forms of money for work are coercive necessarily. Now, if you want to go that route, we can go I there. Didn't but I didn't say think that. Straight. You said okay, that. Okay, then I'm asking. <laughs> no, because you said that a man paying a woman for sex is coercive inherently, and I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah. If it's two consenting people, why is that a coercive act? 
because she wouldn't be doing it otherwise. That's every single job ever. So by that definition. Okay, but there's no potential for trauma in these basic like retail spaces. Bro, there is like, so much potential for trauma in retail spaces. What do you mean? There's potential for trauma in literally any, almost anything. Sexual harassment is in North America illegal. And yet pornography, your job description is literally sexual harassment. That's and sexual not assault. true. Do you think there's a difference between sexual harassment and getting paid for what's sex? What's happening on a porn set? What's happening on a porn set is illegal in any other workplace setting. What do you What do you mean by that? Somebody's offering you money for you to do an action. How is that illegal in any other workplace setting? Do you think that it's ethical to pay somebody to have sex with you? You know that they don't want to have sex with you and you know that they need money. So you say, okay, will you do it if I give you money? Do you think that's that ethical? You're describing every single job ever. I'm going to okay. pay you to make a cheeseburger. I know so you don't want to, but I'm going to pay you, you for it. Are you saying that making a cheeseburger is the same experience as being penetrated by a man? I never said it was the same experience. But okay, it, but you're making these comparisons, not no. me. Okay, let me lay out the little logic train. I'm asking you, why is money for sex? I know that you think that being exa exasperated is going to make you look like you're winning this debate, but you're the one making these comparisons, and I'm responding to them, and then you're saying, no. I, I don't know. She's acting like she's like hearing this thing for the first time, but she's the one who made the first claim. So it's like, it, it, it's like imagine if somebody said, I think... All fruit, wait, yeah, I think all fruit, wait, I'm sorry, I think all orange, what would be a good example? Oh, yeah, I think all apples are red. And then Destiny goes, well, what about, what about Granny Smiths that are green? And she's like, whoa, 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 I'm not talking about Granny Smiths, I'm talking about red apples. It's like, whoa, wait, wait, you just said all apples are red. Well, no, no, no. I was just saying of all, you know, of all red apples, all apples are red. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was like, what she's doing here is just like, all exchanges of money are coercive. Well, no, so, sorry. Really what she says is, exchanging money for sex is coercive and abusive. And then Destiny goes, oh, so what you're saying is that like, what makes that coercive? And she goes, well, the exchange of money between somebody... Somebody doesn't want to have sex with you, and the other person does, but the only thing that's causing them to have sex with you is because of money. So that exchange of money is what's being coercive there. It's, like, essentially what you're saying, right? And so Destiny goes, okay, well, if you have a problem with the uh, with trading money for a good, then you must have a problem with cheeseburgers because nobody wants nobody wants to work a fast food re job and make fucking cheeseburgers. Nobody wants to work fucking retail. Nobody wants to work most jobs, right? So do you have a problem with that as well? And she's like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we talking about McDonald's? You're the one. And then, like, why are we talking about workplaces? You're the one making the comparison now that we're talking. Uh, I don't want to talk about workplaces. I want to talk about the sex industry. It's like, what? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, God. Why are you saying these things? Like, okay. it's super manipulative. Me, I'm, it is absolutely. It's as manipulative or coercive as paying for sexes, okay? You're saying okay, I'm trying well, to ask. Oddly, you, I don't trying, feel raped right I'm now. Trying, so. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm not okay. Leave well, this maybe as the conversation goes on, maybe the feelings will change. Okay. Listen, <laughs> you're saying that I'm, I'm trying to figure out. This is what I'm trying to tease out right now. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why do you think that paying for oh, sex oh, is inherently oh, coercive? And the response that you're giving me is, well, okay, these guys are paying fucking, somebody they don't to do something anyway. that they wouldn't otherwise do. But paying somebody to do something they wouldn't otherwise do is the definition of a job. Every you're single paying job that we to work have sex with you when they okay. don't want to have sex with you, and you're okay. paying them to engage in sex acts that they don't want to engage in. So it's a very intimate, okay. vulnerable thing. I mean, there's yep. a reason we got there. why. Okay. Like, so a lot of women. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, wait, we don't have to. We don't have to go. Off listen, I'm just trying to figure out this one thing. We don't have to do all the other women, okay? I'm just trying to figure out. So if you pay somebody to do something, I always respect okay, your patience. In isn't there a difference like between a person not wanting to do something? versus a person being willing to do something for monetary compensation. So for instance, well, I don't want to- specifically about sex acts. I'm yeah. not talking about like, no, no. I don't know, building a house or like- Yeah, it's, the, it's the exact same thing. So let's say somebody comes up to me and they say, hey, I want to have sex with you. And I go, no, I don't really want to. And they go, do you want to have sex with me for $10,000? And I go, yeah, I think I would do that. Is that still me not wanting to do it? Or is it somebody saying like, yeah, I would do that in exchange for that much money? So do you truly believe that sex like a woman being penetrated by a dick is the same experience as a man fixing a car. I never said it was the same experience. 
It's then not the why same. Are we There's comparing a, these things. We're not. I'm not tr because I'm trying to get you to give me something different than the definition sex. of a job. Sex is the difference. Okay. Sex is the difference. Okay. The sex act is the difference. Gotcha. And we know as a culture that sex and sex acts are intimate, um, and are a space where women are particularly vulnerable. Again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I mean, sex is meaningful. We know that it is. It like not sex necessarily. Is something hold on. Why do you keep going off on tangents? Okay. Sex might be meaningful to you. It might be, mean different things to other people, okay? For some people, it means a paycheck. For other people, it might mean a casual fun encounter. For other people, it might mean creating a family or building a romantic connection. I don't think it's fair for you to define how sex has to be for every single person. I mean, if sex wasn't meaningful and we didn't understand that sex was something where women were particularly vulnerable and could face like lifelong trauma then i don't think as a culture we would understand things like rape and sexual assault to be a very big deal um i don't not, think that as a culture no one is talking about rape sexual or sexual assault, assault to like having your wallet stolen even or stealing a cup of coffee or something Why, like that. i'm not i'm okay just to be very clear because maybe my positions are confusing so i am anti-rape and i'm anti-sexual assault I'm not a fan of either of those things and i'm not here to argue in favor of any of those things um, I understand that women are particularly vulnerable during sex. That's probably true. Uh, how would you? How do you feel about male prostitutes then? Do you think that it would be ethical for men to do sex work? Um, what I don't think is ethical is again for a man to pay a woman or a man for sex. Okay, um, I'm asking if a woman paid a man. Sex, I think is doing something because they need the money and probably they have a whole host of other issues. You're, you're projecting Again, hardcore. Everybody's got issues. Okay. No, I mean, it's you, true. No, no. If okay, you talk you trail to anybody in the porn trail. industry, you know that people are suffering from That's serious mental illness necessarily true. and substance That's abuse. Not, and listen, the same thing is true of prostitution. Yeah, when you've built your whole life on being anti-porn, I'm sure you've talked to a lot of anti-porn people in the My industry. My whole life. I've talked to a lot of pro-porn people <laughs> that are in the industry and out of the industry, okay? You can't keep appealing to like, well, some of the people that I've talked to don't like it. There are a lot of people that do it now that are making a ton of money that would rather do that than work at Starbucks, which I think they should have the opportunity to do. So I'm going to ask I again, do you think that it's unethical? Is it unethical to pay? Is it unethical to pay men for sex? If a male wants to do pornography or if a male wants to sell his, his body for sex is that unethical? yeah i think it's unethical to pay anyone for sex okay then the then the vulnerability and the penetration part don't matter then i don't know why you bring that up if a guy can't even sell his body for sex then then well he's being penetrated also now if what if a if what if it's a male prostitute that has women fuck him like not with a strap on oh i mean that's a real common thing eh <laughs> <laughs> how many people how many women do you know who've ever paid for sex with a male prostitute? I <laughs> Okay. I mean I think that's unethical too, to be okay. fair. That's, but that's it's what just I'm getting at. I'm just trying to figure I mean, out we why you think it's unethical. Stop saying we know that this. No, that's that's your opinion. That is your why opinion. Why do you want to have a conversation with somebody if you don't want to listen to them talk? I don't want to listen to you ramble and go off tangent. I don't. Right now, I don't okay, even then know. Why are we doing this? I, because I'm saying if you can I'm have a conversation. I'm not going off tangent. I'm are. explaining to you what my argument. Oh, it's okay. You're going to reiterate the same. This is the end. You interrupt me and I act completely exasperated because I'm not saying what you want me to say. I don't. You want to frame are. the conversation in a way uh -huh. that I am not interested in framing the conversation. Like the way that I want to talk about this is not how you want to talk about it, and you can't accept that. What the way I'm that trying... I'm looking at this is not the way that you're looking at it, but you don't really want to hear how I'm looking at it. You want to have the conversation you want to have, so there's not really any point to this. You don't want to learn anything you don't want to hear. You just are annoyed that I'm saying something that you don't want me to say. Can you explain so my? This is can totally you wait, unproductive. Can, can you explain? This is just about can you, you like explain showing off my, to your audience. I'm not showing off to anybody. To I'm just trying to have a conversation. I don't know why you're even against sex work. That's what I'm trying to figure out well, right now. I appreciate the big show that you're having. Oh no! no. Oh, you keep interrupting me. Oh god, okay. you're so dramatic. Well, um. Adios. Thanks for having me. Okay, I don't know what I expected. Yeah, I, you know what? That's about what I expected. Okay. We're playing video games. You came here for entertainment. It's all gone. I wrote all this shit down. How fucking annoying. She reminds me of, um, she reminds me of Jackson Hinkle, uh, where anytime you ask them a question, they can't actually engage at all. They just kind of have like their talking points and it's just like, they're going to run them down every single time. She's going to go schizo meltdown on Twitter. Yeah. 
the problem, the the real fact is that like, because I think she spent like ten years like harping on these points. Realistically, somebody like that is never going to back away from their particular position on it, right? Because they've built like a life around being anti-porn, so they can't do it. But um, it's frustrating when you have people that just want to do like the NPC like dialogue tree. Like, why do you think that men can't sell sex if the thing you're worried about? Well, let me say it first. Uh, is what's really annoying about this is that yeah, you when you you'll say a point like, oh hey. Um, why do you think um, sex work is exploitative? And they go, <laughs> well, you know, when a man and a woman, I just think it's unethical for a man and a woman to exchange money for sex. And this is because if a woman, because of all the abuse that happens on Pornhub, you can see it all over the place. There's, you know, uh, th there's the, the uh, incest porn, you know, all this like gross stuff, like uh, people like doing this, you know, Lana Rhodes, she just said this thing about like how she was gagged and stuff like that and had to like, she had to like do massive cuts and not eat anything and take, take all these, uh, laxatives so that she could do anal scenes and, and not be messy and blah, blah, blah. She couldn't eat for like up to whatever the fuck. And that's like super abusive and blah, 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 blah. And then, and then this, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just want to know, like, what what's the what's the main point of like why it's unethical to or he wouldn't even get, he would make, okay wait, wait wait on your first point you said that it's the reason it's unethical because of the exchange of money between a person and another person to for for sex okay why why is that point unethical and she go well you know um, if you're trading. Uh, Money for sex for someone who isn't consenting, you know, because they don't want to do the work. But, you know, uh, like, yeah, they don't want to do the work and you're trying to trade for money for that. I think that's unethical. And the reason for that, they don't want to do work is because, well, you know, the industry is super abusive and, and, and stuff like that. And the, so many people have come out with trauma. Have you seen this person talk about whatever and how they're so traumatized and they get out of the industry and they hate it all and they wonder why they even did it in the first place. And, you know, at the end of the day, it just seems like they all hate it and dislike it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what I know. So you think that the exchange of money, so it's like, whoa, 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 I didn't say to my, it sounds like, or like he'll read it, the exchange of money between two consenting adults for the act of sex, how is that unethical? Well, I just think the exchange of money for sex is unethical. And then, blah, 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 blah. and then it's like, whoa, whoa, okay, wait, if you think the exchange of money for sex is unethical, do you think that, the, maybe what he should have asked is like, do you think the exchange of money for anything is unethical? And then it's like, you would, you would hope that they would say no, right? But the probably what happened is she go, no, the exchange of money for sex is unethical because of... And it's like, whoa, whoa. What about the... So you don't think that the exchange of money for goods is unethical because, you know, other things exist. So then what about... What's specific about sex work? The exchange of money for sex. What is What about that is unethical? <laughs> it's like the vulnerability and the penetration part. Well, you see, we all know that sex is exploitation, and we know that a lot of women that have worked in porn don't enjoy doing that. And um, I've got a lot of friends in porn. Hey, okay, yeah, 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 okay, that's great. But like, what about like men just selling sex? Because the vulnerability part is gone, right? And she's like, that is true. But women that sell sex are in very vulnerable positions. <laughs> yeah. And I've talked to a lot of people in the industry, and they know that any time a woman engages in this, well, activity, actually, what she would have said instead, because she said it right there, was, uh, does that really ever happen? I mean, I'm against that, anyways. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about women in the. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> She couldn't even stay on one fucking topic? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you see her expression when you said you're going off on tangents, look? The ironic, the anti, well, no, nah, never mind. that's right. Yeah. Where the fuck did they go? I thought I saw them walking down here. A lot of people don't see how much the porn industry has changed too. The thing that pisses me off the most about people like what the that fuck? is that, again. Um, the thing that irritates me the most about people like that, and it's the same with every like actual conversation, is I think that there is a really interesting conversation that can be teased out when it comes to pornography and when it comes to sex work, right? Like, I mean, go the other is way. it the case? So I think I remember following like the ones that go down this way. Dynamic in men like on watching porn and getting enjoyment out of that that makes us view what women in society like a particular way. 
right? And, and should, should, is it, should that be something we push against, right? I think there is an interesting conversation that we teased out there, but a lot of these people are treating porn like it's the same industry that it was in the 90s and 2000s, and it's not. Porn is significantly different. Bro, porn stars in like, even like 2010 would get paid like $500 and some cocaine to film a scene, and then they would like blow it all on more drugs afterwards, and it was fucking horrible, right? Where is it coming That existed in like the 90s and early 2000s, I agree, it was like probably pretty fucked. Right? And I think most people that work in porn, I think can probably agree that it was like pretty fucked. I can agree with that. But to compare that to the scene that exists today, at least in terms of pornography, bro, like Pornhub pretty viciously verifies and audits like people that are on the platform in general. That's why like 90% of the porn got fucking removed. There's like a lot of independent creators now. It wouldn't surprise me if on Pornhub, I don't know the numbers, but it wouldn't surprise me if the majority of the women on there now are independent creators, right? Because you can upload your own stuff. You can film with your own boyfriend or guy or talent or whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, so you have to, you've got to, she kept saying like, I only want to talk about reality. It's like, okay, well let's talk about like the industry as it exists today. And not as you're like, like everybody's being forced and raped and assaulted, you know, like you, you think it is, which is fucking annoying, but whatever. Uh, so find someone to have this conversation with because it's absolutely an interesting one. The problem is, is that like, this is one of those, this is like one of those, it's like trans yeah, are dead. This is one of those brain rot topics where the people that feel the way that they do, their entire life's philosophy is built around how they engage with this topic. So when you've got like somebody that's like hypercritical of like recent wave feminism, whatever the fuck they say they're against, um, and they've built like a, because she's what, she's got like a feminist magazine. She's got like all this shit that's built around the topic. She's never changing her position. She's not even in a place where she can even like rationally change her position. Like it might be irrational for her to even consider a change of position because she's built so much of her life around it. So when the when the conversation is dominated by those types of ideologues, uh, you can you, you're just done. It's, there's nothing to be said, right? And then on the other end, you've got people that are I don't even want to say on the other end and act like it's the same because like when I've watched people that are generally like pro porn engage with the topic, at least they seem to be able to like critically engage with it. Because um, we watched that panel with um, whatever Eva's real name is. Um, Alo seems at least capable of engaging with it in a critical manner. I'm sure that if you pulled her on, that she would have some negative things to say about the sex industry. She'd have some positive things to say about the sex in industry. But like any entertainment industry, it's all going to be, um, it, it, there's going to be pros and cons to everything, right? Fucking Kaepernick did commercials comparing NFL recruitment um, of, of football players to fucking slavery, right? So like literally no matter what the industry is, you're always going to have pros and cons. Um, but it feels weird that like you could be like on the pro-feminist side and basically be in a position where a woman could work a job that could be incredibly fruitful and she could have full control over it and she could make a lot of money and you're basically saying like, I'm a feminist, I'm gonna tell you that you're not allowed to work that job because in my society that's unethical because I've got like some almost quasi-puritanical views around sex or sex work, I guess is what it feels like sometimes. She wanted you to do what Ayla did and just pre- Yeah, I know, it's just fucking annoying. Only look through a portion of this section. Try and be careful, all right? It, just round up the rest of the magical art. Yeah, this is why when Erudite, when I asked Erudite to help me prepare a little bit, I was like, I'm pretty sure I know. That sounds really mean to say. Never mind. That one was a fucking idiot. Fuck that. <laughs> it's like candy. Oh, yeah, let me get the. Oh, oh, oh! Oh no! I'm a trap. Make the topics like that. Um, I think we should agree to a moderator. I bet that would be better. Because that way the person, like... Because now she can say, like, oh, I quit his stream because it was unfair. But if there's a moderator involved, I think she looks a little bit worse. Just, like, moonwalking out of the conversation. Can you predict what she's going to write on Twitter? Um, it's probably gonna be like the standard that people write when they get ass blasted, like, oh, debate tactics, uh, you know, shouting over me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, bro. Please be careful. Well, would you? This appears to lead somewhere. Let's see where it goes. The way that she talks about it too, I wonder if she has like personal like trauma related to pornography. If like a boyfriend like cheated on her or something and he she found him like jerking off the porn or something.
Bro, are you really gonna stick both of those right there? Okay. Why in the world would this be sealed off? What is this place? I think it'd be better to just let her ramble and then directly reiterate your question. No, the problem is that like when somebody's allowed to ramble like that, they build their case over and over and over again in the eyes of the audience. Like she's building her case repeatedly. She's laying out like her entire view of the world. And then for me to just counter with a question, over time, it's gonna build weakness um, optically in my argument. It's gonna make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I'll be asking questions and the audience will just think, okay, well she's already kind of addressed like all of this. Like you have like, the, really the only way to like truly counter that, um, if you wanted to get like political, um, is like where while they lay out their whole thing, um, when you go to respond, you just lay out your whole thing. That's that's like a real life political debate. That's what real life political debates look like. It'll be like um, a politician like saying a particular thing, and then when the opponent goes to respond, he doesn't actually respond, but he takes an opportunity to lay out like his particular thing, and then they just go back and forth like that, never really responding to each other, but just like building on their worldviews every time they have an opportunity to talk. Which, in my opinion, is really fucking boring. But. I can certainly share a bit of what I know. Take a look. Typically, you should use them to enchant them and then sell them, but whatever. Need cash now? Actually, no, I'm lying. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Jesus. Fuck, I feel so fucking bad for this guy. Oh my god. Destiny's face like the same guy like three fucking times and, and beat him every single time. Ooh. Until next time. MMR did you take from today? I don't know, too much. Okay. Boring! We're playing video games now. <sighs> Going live on Why can't I spell? Fuck. Donald Trump held an event yesterday at Club 45, which I guess they're renaming Club 47 because they want Trump to be the 47th president or something. This was such a confusing event during which Donald Trump visibly struggles to drink water at one point. It's really weird. He takes questions from children and still can't answer them in any sensible way. I don't know what the hell this guy is doing, but he is incredibly desperate for uh, relevance. He's desperate for sycophants to suck up to him, which I guess he doesn't feel Fox News and Wall Street Journal are doing anymore to the degree that he wants. Let's look at this. This first uh, clip, Trump takes a question from a kid who's wearing a Trump one shirt. And remember, the right is worried that the left is indoctrinating children. Think about that as you listen to this. Uh, hello, Mr. President. Hi, I love that shirt. It's so beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you. He's got a shirt. Trump won. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheering that they are teaching a kid to believe things that simply aren't true. After you become the 47th president, what are you going to do to stop the war in Ukraine? Yeah. So I would literally 
start calling not from the day I took over, but from the night I won. And I called two people. Two people. You know the two people? Putin, right? You know who Putin is? And Zelensky. Zelensky. And I'd say, we're going to meet. We're gonna That's how he would say it. He would get on the phone and he'd go, we're going to meet. meet. And I would, I, I guarantee I could work that out. Oh, man. I guarantee. I know exactly what I'd say, by the way. I know exactly. I tell one guy this, and I tell one guy that, and I say, you better make a deal. Trump's foreign policy ideas, extremely convincing to nine-year-olds. I think that that, if, it, if there's any big uh, ringing endorsement, if there's any bigger ringing endorsement, I can't think of one. Um, here's another really crazy one. This guy is almost in tears. It really seems like Trump is taking almost questions from tears. random people, which is totally fine. Oh. I actually think it would be. Imagine <laughs> if the a president fuck? more regularly took questions from random people. I think that that's great. The problem is these people are such delusional sycophants. President Trump, I'd like to say it's a great honor to be in the same room with you. By the way, for all I know, this isn't a random person and it's like some fundraising guy or who knows. Number Thank one. you, it's my honor. <laughs> I'd also, I'd also like to thank you for your sacrifice. Yeah. To the people of this country. Thank you. Really a martyr who gave up his great life to help us. People, very nice. People don't understand, you had it made in the shade. And you stuck your neck out for us. That's true. That I <laughs> So true. <laughs> He's like infatuated. Oh dear God. What this is this is the United States in 2023. This is the front runner to be the Republican nominee for the presidency of the United States. Trump then pulling out his famous like N-word rant, which he just loves. Nuclear is so devastating that we don't even want to talk about it. And that was a word that was never supposed to be mentioned you have two n-words neither of which should ever be mentioned <laughs> i said that once i said oh what a terrible thing to say no you have two n-words yep. you know what the one is but the other is the nuclear word not supposed to ever be mentioned ever 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 but trump's gonna say the n-word for us i guess when he talks to Putin, as he likes to say um no trump event is uh, complete without Trump complaining about the 2020 election, which is now uh, closing in on three years ago. And indeed he did. There's no way you can lose the election. And we got close to 75 million votes. And that's only what they agreed to. That's only what they say. It's much higher than that, but they agreed to it. So we got, based on that, we got 12 million more votes, right? And we lost hey, a whisker <laughs> here and a whisker there. And you know, when you look, oh, Pennsylvania. I guess he's at least admitting he lost, maybe. Pennsylvania, how about Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania was over at 10 o'clock, and then all of a sudden, they had a large drop. A dump. Yeah, by a, the way, a big dump. he's no longer saying dump. He's now saying drop. Now, these people are really, uh, it's so sad. It's so sad. I mean, th there's no way. Yeah. So anyway, Trump bemoaning that election that just got away it just got away from him really projecting incredible strength with winding three years on trump then is asked a question by ashton who i guess is like a young reporter a young republican reporter and he can't even answer these these softball questions in a way that makes sense hi mr president my name is ashton i'm the president of the palm beach county young Republican. very impressive yes. wow. Wow. Yes. So, good as the club <laughs> well, I, I look, I said, I have one little phrase that I think became the most powerful phrase in the history of politics and maybe in any country. You know what the phrase is? Make America great again. That's going to be his messaging to young people. By the way, it's the same messaging that got him almost no youth vote in 2016 and almost no youth vote in 2020. That's his message. We go into details, and you know what the details, because we've been talking about them the whole night. Make America great again. Another one, America first. We put America first. Right. They're putting America That's really going to resonate with Gen Z. You can just tell. Um, at another point, a completely indoctrinated super fan of Trump says, what can we do to fight for you? What can we do? And Trump says, I need your undying support. This is literally a cult.
it 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 meets all of the requirements of a cult. Thank you very much. So my question is, since you're fighting for us, yep. what do you want us to do to fight for you? Just your support, your support, and not even monetary support. I mean, what we need is your absolute undying support. Undying. And we have it, and we have other places throughout the country where the spirit, we've never seen spirit like we see it right now. And I think, Donnie, that spirit, that support, uh, and we can't be stopped. And once we're there, we're going to fix this country. Yep, he's going to fix it as soon as he gets a shot. I mean, okay, he had four years and he made the country worse in so many ways. But this time, you can believe him. This time, he really is going to fix it. Someone in the <laughs> audience wanted Trump to weigh in on whether AT&T... How do you stop this, man? No. <laughs> Which is not exactly small government behavior. It's not exactly the lightest touch of regulation that Republicans claim to want. But um, DirecTV dropped Newsmax. And so now, what about dismantling... AT Why is that what you so tinge? 1982, AT&T was dismantled because it became too big for its britches. <laughs> AT&T subsidiary, DirecTV, just banned Newsmax. Yeah, terrible. Broadcasting. Is it time to dismantle AT&T again because it's getting too big for its britches? Well, yeah. The small government crowd that is against regulation is calling for the government to destroy a business. Thank you, sir. AT&T is a lousy company. It's highly overlevered. It's run by radical left people. Honestly, it's doing so badly. You know, normally you dismantle when they're doing so well. at and is doing badly. Uh, they got rid of, uh, they took it and uh, DirecTV, which I guess they own, and they got rid of Newsmax, and hopefully they'll put it back. Put it back. And OAN also. OAN was fantastic and still is fantastic, but it's a nope. struggle for them because <laughs> what? they're being deplatformed. What the fuck? They deplatformed me, and now they're all begging for me to come back. You know why? Because they're dying out there without us. That's why truth is so good. That's Pro why truth is so good. But you know what I mean. AT&T is like a lousy company. It's leveraged to the hilt. Yep. It, uh, it's doing very poorly. And yet they get <sighs> rid of a, a Newsmax and an OAN, who actually both got very good ratings. And I think uh, there's a lot of pressure being put on. AT&T dropped, you know, their stock since that time. Woo! Yeah, the guy in the crowd is, all, is very much aware of that. Um, so just a completely unhinged event in every single way. There was the most interesting moment was where Donald Trump seemed to acknowledge something I said yesterday, which is some of the people that are getting into this race against Trump, which is really just Nikki Haley, it may be less about winning than about auditioning to be Trump's VP. And Trump seems to be saying exactly that. A lot of people are right now auditioning. You know that a lot of people, a lot of people that are running at one percent, two percent, three percent, no percent. We have a couple that are joining. They're at no percent. I say, I wonder what they're doing. I think they're auctioning right now. For, they're auditioning right now. For auctioning. Right. They're auctioning. Uh, no, Trump, I don't think Trump's wrong. And in fact, I think this is one of the possibilities when it comes to Nikki Haley um, as to why she is not drawing a single policy distinction with Trump. So there it is, Trump addressing supporters and, and taking questions. Good for him for taking questions. It's just the questions are insane and the answers are even crazier. That's the only downside. But it's a beautiful thing, I think, to take questions from supporters. Uh, let's now focus in on the DeSantis part. Plastic, it's everywhere we look and not enough is being done about it. 100 billion plastic bags are used and thrown away every year. Here's something.
Dude, I'm gonna fucking blow my brains out. I put my keyboard in a weird spot and I fucking can't type a single fucking thing. I want to offer a promotion for your channel. Viewers fault? No. You see, it's how it got voted in. Oh, was there a Machado game on tonight? So I'm not gonna be able to watch probably. Other 
There is. What the fuck? How in the flying fuck is Montreal up 3 nothing? What the hell just happened? Hold on, let me mute my... Shit, hold on. Properties. Um, let me hear this and then I can listen to this. I think it might, it's just gonna lag that bad. Why the fuck are we beating? How? How the fuck are we beating New Jersey? He scored first? <laughs> oh, wow, right across. Oh, my God. Okay, so slick Nick with a slick Nick pass. New Jersey will eventually score. Don't care. First period will end. Second period will start. Just get back to. And they score like twice in two seconds! Oh, no, they don't. Wow, Kovacev has scored. Okay, interesting. That's a save you should have, though, as the goalie. He's, like, ready for it, but not ready enough. The announcer fucking Suzuki with a snipe. The snipe was so hard the announcer had a made a mistake. Okay. Here's but end, but whatever. <sighs> Snake. Oh, this fucking stupid shit. I spin that, it spins this, so that's like that. This will spin nothing. So that spins both of those. If I go here, okay, this spins nothing. So I can set that up to be whatever I want at the end. I need this. Okay. No, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I want this to go here. What is this control? This controls all of them? Okay. 
So this gets controlled by nothing though. So what I'll do is I'll set this one up. Now that one's set up. And then. That one just goes by that one. So that one's one move away. And. You can make that one one move away for. What? There's a trap right there. Watch out. I told you, there's a trap there, man. What the fuck? The Eye of Magnus. Let me tell you that, okay? It's really hard. Leave me alone. Be bound here, Yurik, murderer, betrayer, condemned by your crimes against realm and lord. May your name and your deeds be forgotten forever, and the charm which you bear be sealed by your ward. By our ward? Return to the college and inform Savo Sauron of this discovery. Please hurry. Should I seek your way out of here? Or they walk all the way back. Ah. Don't know the word power is, I can lie. Ice swarm? Okay.
Don't bother the archmage in this trap. If there are any problems. I mean, first of all. Well, I mean, first of all, thank you, Ben. Relatively new here, are you not? I have noticed you, but we have not spoken. I am Savo. I am quite, but I. Do. Are we clear? Ah, please don't tell me that another one of the. I see. I thank you for bringing. Hofdia normally, since he's apparently occupied, and I will need to see this discovery for myself. I think perhaps you should. Speak with Urog in the Arcanium. See if... And good work. The next time you find yourself exploring Nordic ruins, perhaps this will be helpful. <laughs> what you learn here will last you a lifetime. There you are. I've been trying. I just wanted to let you know that Ancano's been asking about you. I'm not sure. Just. Well, my. Between the two of us, there are rumors about him. That what he's really doing is spying for the Thalmor, trying to feed them information. But it never hurts to be a little suspicious. You're welcome. Mm hmm. I have many important things on my mind. Your concerns are not among them. I, I am at the Archmage's disposal if he requires advice.
Oh. How do I quiver tile can I get around? Spell of Tone will teach you its reader the unique art of telekinesis arrows, giving both a lesser power and a knowledge to craft these special arrow. Oh. There's a fucking unicorn? Jeez. Wait. I don't want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Are we clear? You are now disrupt my arcane. No. Do you require assistance? I know. Well, you don't even need to ask. No, I don't. I said not anymore. Orthorn stole a number of books when he ran off. I think one of those volumes may have had some relevant information. If you want them, we'll have to talk to Orthorn. As a man, immensely powerful mage. Back he holds himself up since then. I've heard whispers of more of his work having turned up. If you can track it down, it may prove useful to all of us. Mm -hmm. You there. You were in Sarthol, yes? It has come to my attention that something was found there. I am well aware. Tolfdir is still in Sarthol, is he? I shall be expecting a full report from him. Something was discovered in Sarthol that was significant enough that Tolfdir... That sounds precisely like the sort of... Thank you for your help. You may go now. You there. You were in Sarthol, yes? I know full well. Tolfdir is still there now, is he? It... My role as... Thank you for your help. You may go. I care little for... I if you require... If you would, the summoning of undead is even less advice. Spells and incantations for those with the talent to cast them. Mm-hmm. Shut the fuck up. What you learn here will last you a lifetime. Except
Oh, good job, Montreal. You get a power play, instantly negate it with your own penalty. Good job. Hey, else I want to play? Hold on. I don't think so. I don't even think I want to play Factorio right now. God, it's almost 9 o'clock. Uh... It feels like Josh Anderson has no, um, Josh Anderson has, like, no, I don't know, I don't know, I just seem, I don't want to say, because I've only seen it a couple times recently, but it seems like he doesn't really have much of a finishing edge, but could be totally wrong on that. Why the fuck did you tell me to go here if it's not even... Okay, what a dumbass way to get me into the Arcanium. Okay, I think I'm gonna end the stream here, just cause I, I, I don't wanna stuck out here past nine.